Hi, my name is Mike, and welcome to my channel, Build It or Buy It, where I build items from scratch and determine whether or not that was a better way to go or whether I should have purchased it. So in the background, you'll see this trailer behind me. I'm finishing up the last episode or two of this complete build from scratch. So if you're interested in this kind of content, please subscribe, like, and ring the bell. And by all means, go back to the first episode from where I begin the design work through every step of the build. For those of you that have been watching the channel, as you can see in the background, the deck is on. So stick around for this episode where I'll finish that up. And then at the very end of the episode, we'll get some paint on it. Welcome back. Um, today, other than the kind of the wrap up of the cost comparison today, or this video might uh, might be the last video. We'll see. Uh, I'm all done with uh, the electrical. I'll I'll touch on that in a minute. Um, so I've moved the shot or the trailer outside. I did touch up that paint that was a little thin, and I put on my woodworking hat today and. I brought in that kind of that work deck trailer with the deck boards and um, I'm going to go ahead and get those start getting the edge boards milled out because um, they need a little bit of milling work you'll see here in a second what uh, what I need to do on that um, so realistically I'll show you the jig I'm going to build um, I'll show you a little bit of the mill work I have to do to make them fit under the channel. And other than that, it's just a matter of laying them out on the deck and running the screws in. So I'll show you a little bit of that, but not too much. So overall, content-wise, uh, this hopefully will wrap it up. So if you recall, I'm going to switch camera view here. If you recall when, when I, I think it was the first episode that I talked a lot about the I wanted and putting the cross members in actually it wasn't the first episode it was when I was putting the cross members in I wanted to have the boards the lumber um, stand proud of the deck just a tiny little bit that way if you want to sweep it off or something you don't um, catch an edge let me get a pointer here so the the cross members are in here that supports the deck boards this is an in, uh, in section or a cross section of the board so that will put the height of this board I zoom in enough here about a 32nd of an inch right there higher than the piece of channel channel as we talked about this this uh, web is not straight it's an angle it's uh, right at 10 degrees so I need to what I need to do is I need to notch out this portion of the 2 by 4 that runs along each side and also runs along the front and then the back since I'm using a piece of flat stock um, it'll have a notch also but it won't be angled it'll just be a square notched so if um if the lumber you could buy nowadays was halfway straight and halfway decent I would just set up the dado stack and the table saw, tilt it to 10 degrees, and run those two boards through. Um, but they are 17 feet long. So trying to, to balance them, I've got you know in-feed and out-feed roller tables that I could set up. So I still might consider that, we'll see. Um, but if not, I'm gonna kind of go down the road of building just a small jig that would go on the the, the the router, the faceplate of the router that will hold the router at um, that needed 10 degrees with a little bit of a fence on it. So then I could just run it down the length of each board. I probably could accomplish those on the table saw if I picked two of the straighter boards and use the roller stand, but I also have to do that on the end grain for each one of the boards. So trying to run a 17 foot long board in a cross cut configuration. I mean, I have a big table saw, but still it's 17 foot board. It's, it would be very, very difficult. So I think I'll um, go the route of building the jig for the router. So I'll set the camera up. Um, we'll kind of do that and then uh, start milling on some of the boards. So this is basically the jig. The red lines 
will be just made out of some 2x6 stock. Um, they're dimensioned here, but the router will bolt down to this axis right here. So the router, router, router motor will be up here. The router bit will come down. Um, basically, it'll be right in here approximately. Like that. So that way it matches, cuts out this 10 degree notch out of there. So anyway, we'll get going on that. The first piece I'm going to do is just this little, this is the, in essence the fence. Um, so it's two inches tall and then with the 10 degree miter that makes it one uh, inch, 820 thousandths on the other side. So I'll cut this to two inch, tip the blade to um, 10 degrees and then knock that top edge off. Well, one of the tools I had on the fence, I'll show you it here because like I mentioned, I like to sh occasionally show a tool that's kind of handy for anybody that does construction work or even if you don't do construction work but you use these construction pencils all the time. And some people put it over their ear, they hook it in their hat, some work um, belts have spots for them, but sometimes you don't have that on. So I seen this, um, seen a guy use this one time and it was kind of handy because you can just clip it wherever you want on your tool belt, on your regular belt, whatever. And it has a little rubber end that's soft, so it'll, it'll mold around whatever kind of pencil you want. It's specifically designed for construction pencils. So that pencil goes in there, it's got a little hook to hook on whatever, and it's a retractable lanyard. So whether you hook it on a pocket or your the suspenders or your tool belt or whatever, you can grab your it telescopes out about, looks like about three and a half feet. Um, I kind of like it on the belt loop, that way you can just grab it and grab your pencil and use it wherever you want it. Got the string there, you let it go, and you don't ever have to worry about where'd my pencil go. Okay, that gets a cut exactly to two inches. Um, this is it's a scale drawing, so I couldn't remember how thick I made. I made it an inch thick, or when I drew it up, it was an inch thick. So I'll prune it down to an inch. That way, it's nice and square. All right, so that gives me the two-inch wide. Um, by one inch block, I'll cut the miter on it, and that piece will be ready. All right, so that's that piece. Uh, I just ran this piece through the surface planer. It had a little bit of a cup to it, so uh, you can see there's a, still a little bit of a low spot, so that it's fits a lot flatter against the fence and with the blade, the blade's as high as it'll go so I'll cut, I'll probably have to try and cut this uh, taper because the taper is a total of four and three quarters or a little over four and a quarter inches long and I can't quite get to that with the blade so I'll do it from both sides. might actually be okay um, as you can see it doesn't quite have enough throat for that but the router base sits on top of that and the router base half of that is right at three inches so actually I don't need that line um, to travel all the way through here I can go ahead and just run it through the saw and notch that piece out. Okay, so that piece is notched out. That matches this angle. So when they are put together like that, the angle, and this won't be the, this piece won't be the full width. This just is a fence, so um, I'll actually make it a little bit narrower. So all I'm gonna do now is just square up this edge. 
so that it, it's easier to glue up. Okay, so this piece will just actually uh, just glue and screw on there. That gives you, that continues that 10 degree angle. And, um, and as you can see, kind of creates a little bit of a sled that the router will attach to. Okay, so a little bit of glue and a couple screws. A little bit of glue and it, then it gives you this and the way it works. Still have to mount it to the router, but in essence, it sits on here, just like that. Slide it up and down the board, and because of this angle, that tips the router at the needed 10 degrees to account for the angle on the web on the channel iron. So um, I'll get the hole drilled and get it mounted to the router, and then show you how it works. Okay, I got the piece, uh, got the whole board through it, and it clamped on the router base. Basically, it creates, you can see, it's almost like a reverse router table. Clamps on the router base at that 10 degree angle. There's a clearance hole for the, a two flute carbide dado bit. I've got just a scrap two by six here that I ran it through once. Needs to be a little bit deeper. So I'll make one more pass here, a little bit deeper, and then we'll go out and see how it fits on the trailer. It just starts. You can see there it needs to go a little bit more, so tiny little bit deeper. Perfect. Nice and snug. You can see how it fits there. Look at the underside angle. Should match. And if we look at it from the outside, kind of down the board, you can see that the board is just like I said, just sticking up enough that if you went to sh uh, sweep it off or something, nothing gets caught on it versus if you put it underneath the channel and don't notch that, when you go to sweep off, everything catches on this edge. Okay, we're back inside. Now what determined, as you've seen the angle fits well, what determined this distance here to here, that total depth there, that could, for the most part, be pretty much whatever you want it to be. But I wanted to try to not have to end up with an oddball size two by four or, or two by six or if anything i wanted to just have to slightly rip the very last board for fitting so i just it basically took the dimension of the inside of the channel so this edge right here from side to side took that measurement and then added up how many um, two by sixes it would take to fill that space and it coincidentally worked out to be 14 of them was just a little bit wider, wider by this much times two to account for each side. So basically by cutting this much width off of each one, it'll be on the long axis. Um, that gets the total two by six stacked package just about right. It'll be just slightly wide so then on the very last board that I put in the middle, I might have to rip a little tiny bit off of that. Um, so anyway, that's how I came up with, um, with that measurement. And so I'll get kind of set up here and I'll bring you back here once I'm kind of set up and start to do the milling.
take that out there and see what it looks like. I'll have to take a chisel and knock this little bit of this corner off uh, from where the well bead sticks out. But other than that, just like I wanted it, I wanted a nice snug fit. And as I mentioned, down here where the flat flat piece will go. So that'll go on there clamp that down so I just have to cut a rabbit in the end of that and then the boards will be captured on both ends and on the sides and screwed down in the middle so I'll get busy milling the rest of them and bring you back here in a little bit okay so I trimmed that corner off um, the wood chipped out a little bit but it's just a trailer so you can see you get a nice tight joint there a nice tight joint on the side and even without screws, they are kind of captured down. So there will be a screws, of course, um, two screws per board. I'll go over that a little bit later, what type of screws I use. One, we're going to get the paint on the trailer deck today. But before I go in the shop and do that, I did have a couple comments uh, from individuals about a rig that they saw in the background. So I thought I'd pan over to that. And of those of you guys that are car guys, see in the comments, you guys can guess as to what you're making model you think it is. Alrighty, so I got all of the uh, milling done on the lumber. Um, I'll swing you around here in a second and show you that. Actually, I'll just show you now. A uh, couple of the boards are still on the floor. Um, it has to do with I need to cut those out for around those stake pockets. Of course, most lumber is not very straight, so I've got a couple bar clamps on, three bar clamps total, one there, one in the middle, and one up front to hold the lumber um, tight against each other. I'm not gonna use any spacing at all. So um, I did, I already pre-coated the, the milled portion of the boards, and then I'll coat the whole decking after it's um, down. As far as what I'm gonna use, uh, there's just as many different ways to treat deck boards as there probably are trailers. Some people just leave the wood untreated. I've heard of using, some people will use diesel. Some people have used, used motor oil, um, linseed oil, boiled linseed oil, some of the, the wood deck preservatives, things like that. They all have pros and cons. Um, I'm just going to use a, a roll-on bed liner type coating because it's black. I kind of like that contrast of black and, and orange versus the uh, natural wood look. So I went or hit a, I went all those areas where I had milled the lumber, went and already coated those since I can't get to those since it's under the channel. Um, and then I'll top coat it. Uh, layout wise, I just made a mark since I won't be able to see the cross members. I made, you really probably can't see it, but I made one little tiny mark. At, on each one of the main frame rails as to where I want the screws to be. Did that down both sides so that once the board, boards are clamped in place, I can just snap a chalk line across um, to affix them. I'm using a, a, a screw that's actually specifically meant for trailer deck boards. They're kind of spendy. Um, there's well, there's, what, 14 boards, I think, 14, 15 boards, something like that. So there's cross-member-wise, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's 11 cross-members. Um, there's two screws per, so that's like 28 screws per cross-member. So there's three, almost 300 screws, give or take, somewhere in that range. Um, so it, it adds a little, a little bit. I think the screws were like, oh, you'll see that in the final uh, price breakdown, but I think they were... 70 or 75 dollars but they're specifically meant for this um they're a countersunk screw i like torx head because they don't you don't have the phillips you got to worry about trying to keep them from stripping out um they're self-drilling so they've got a drill bit at the end and then they've got those two little wings 
see better against my shirt. Those two little wings there and what those do, I'll, I'll give you a close up here. I'm installing one. Those actually ream the wood out so the threads don't engage the wood because if the wings didn't um, ream the wood, then the thread would try to go into the wood and because it's self-drilling, when the drill got to the steel, it would try lifting the board. The board would ride up the threads and it lift the board off this way. It floats inside of the wood. Um, so that's what those two little nubbins are for. And then it's got a, I don't know if you can see it there. Turn it right there. Yeah, you can just see that little line right there. That's just a relief to help the threads cut into the steel. So you don't have to pre-drill. You just run them straight through the wood into the cross member. You could do it with a cordless or impact. I tried that on a couple and, and it goes through batteries pretty quick. So I just switched over to half inch electric drill. So I'll put a, I'll put one in, I'll put a second one in. Gonna give you a close up so you can, you can actually see, I think you'll be able to see how those little wings actually um, ream the wood. So let me scooch down here and see if. The other advantage of, of the half inch drill is it's the one with the D handle on the end. You can really look, kind of let you just lean down against it and put a lot of pressure on it. Um, so you, do, you don't burn the drill tip up. Because if you just spin it really fast without pushing really, really hard to make the drill cut, you'll just work harden the cross member and then you'll go through a bunch of screws. So anyway, that's kind of that. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll, I'm just going to get started putting those in. I'm going to put in the first, like the first four rows or so. And then that'll get me to the board that has to be notched out around that stake pocket. So I'll bring you back for that. I switched over to um, drilling the holes with a regular drill bit, even though these have a drill at the end and as you've seen on the first couple holes you can actually fully install them um, using that drill bit but it's not the sharpest um, so I found that it actually takes longer even with the big half inch drill pushing really hard it takes longer mosquitoes it takes longer using the drill bit on these than if I pre-drill with a regular drill bit and then follow up um, with these I was doing there was that was the board that goes um, right at that stake pocket so instead of trying to reach underneath and trace that or take the measurements I just laid the board in position and obviously you see me hammer on it with a hammer and that just transfers an imprint of that stake pocket into the bottom of the board makes a perfect cut line Looks like it's going to work out pretty much perfect as far as board width. I mean, I measured it up that way, but there's enough variation in lumber. I wasn't 100% confident it would work out. But I just drove that last board down in there. Here, I've still got to drive it forward just so it engages the rabbit. But as you can see, there is pretty much no gap. 
So let's hope it fits that way all the way down. It should, because I've been measuring as I've been going along. kind of see the seeing the boards fit down in there you don't need to watch me drill 308 holes so some have already been drilled so I will bring you back once I've got that done and I'm ready to put the coating on the deck all right so there it is with the deck boards all on screwed down 300 count officially counted 336 Holes drilled and screws installed. The uh, coating I'm going to use, it's a, I think I mentioned it's kind of a rubberized roll-on bed liner. Kind of the one you just would get from, I got it from my local North 40. But several companies, Herculine or some of those others sell it. Um, so we'll see how it goes. The, the rubber chunks that are in it are pretty big, so I'm not sure I'll be super happy with the coating. But um, it'll protect the wood, which is the goal. Uh, let's see. Oh, it did. I looked at the, it talks about the prep on it being a real coarse. I think they mentioned 40 grit. I actually used, I had some 36, uh, grit DA pads. So I DA'd, uh, the whole thing last night to rough it up. So that gets us pretty much ready to put that on this morning before it gets too hot here. So already, I think it's already eight, but almost 85 outside. So I'm going to stay inside here in the shop because as well as I insulated it, it is, feels like about, let me look, I think it feels like about 70 in here. It's actually 66 in here. So I'm just gonna set you up in the background. I'm gonna tape this, tape off the perimeter so I don't get any of it on there. And then uh, we'll get it painted. And then frankly, we will be done with this build. And then the last episode, it'll be probably a super short one because this one's already getting a little bit long, so I'll include it in a separate episode where I will have the, the final cost roll up as compared to if I would try to go buy this uh, trailer as close as I could to the way it's built, and then we'll I'll post that probably in the next couple days. I'm just going to go get a quote from a local trailer dealer on Monday. I didn't have any rolls of 6-inch masking paper on my masking machine there so I had a 12 inch roll I've never done this before but thought I'd see what happened so I just took that 12 inch roll wrapped uh, some two inch wide blue tape really tight around the center of it and took it over to the miter box and cut it in half so it gives me two six inch rolls so it's time for another tool tool example here if you ever do any painting it doesn't even have to be automotive or equipment it could be your house whatever you can pick up these they call them masking machine it's not really a machine but um i'll set you up here so you can see it i'll give you kind of a walk around it's just a machine it's got some serrated knives on it quite a few different uh, spring-loaded tubes so that you can put multiple rolls of different width paper on it and then it has these tape holders and so basically it dispenses when you pull it out, you'll see here, when you pull it out, it dispenses your paper and puts the tape on it for you. So, you just give it a grab, pull it out, tear it off, and as big a piece as you can manage, you can tear off. and get a look at this how thick this and chunky this stuff is that's what concerns me a little 
but we'll see. I don't know how that's going to show up on the camera, but it kind of looks like cottage cheese, so I'm not sure they say it's a roll on. We'll, we'll see how it goes. I think it's going to be easier to just pour it out because it's with all the clumps or the rubber clumps in it, it's kind of hard to get it to pick up on the roller. So I'm going to try this and see what happens because I'm getting a lot of liquid out of it, it's leaving a lot of the rubber left. So let's see what happens. it I'm fortunately I am either at half or a little over half and have this last little bit to spread so um, I'll be obviously running the grid grabbing another gallon of this all right well I'll do a little cleanup here I'll do a walk around to make sure there's no spot with large globs of large globs of the rubber smooth out a little bit and then uh, bring it back when I've got another gallon. Well, there it is. That's the final bit of work, I guess. Pull it outside so it'll help it dry. Give you a look here. So, well, that'll wrap it up for this episode. Uh, as, as I mentioned, uh, give me a couple days and come back and take a look. Or the best, better thing to do would re ring that bell for notifications and I will have the full cost wrap up as compared to buying a trailer. So and again, thanks for coming and watching this build. Uh, I've got two or three ideas for the next build, so um, come back and check for those and you'll see what they are. Thanks.